Sasha Stone is never one to allow a complete lack of plausibility to get in the way of a profitable conspiracy grift. After all, that has been his job for the last 30 years, since his original career ambition, uh, becoming a rock musician, that failed completely. And, and so Sasha had to reinvent himself as this sort of conspiracy guru, uh, a sort of transcendental healer come meditation expert with a sideline in selling completely implausible conspiracy theories. Uh, and that's what we're going to look at today. Sasha first came to our attention when he promoted the film 5G Apocalypse, the extinction event. And perhaps the most unusual thing about that film is its lead character was none other than Mark Steele. Okay, smart, smart technology, smart meters, smart cars. What does smart mean? Secret militarized armaments in residential technology. That's clearly preposterous, because as we all know, Mark Steele is not an expert in anything. He left school age 16 and took a series of dead-end jobs, such as fence installer and pub bouncer. And Mark Steele rose to notoriety in the early 90s when he carelessly and recklessly shot a teenage girl in the face. And after spending a few years in prison, Mark also reinvented himself as a sort of conspiracy theory influencer, which was why Mark Steele ended up working with Sasha Stone on his next project as well. This uh, bizarre device. It, it looks like a USB stick because that's what it is. It's a plain, ordinary USB stick. But Sasha and Mark marketed this device under the name 5G BioShield, a device that claimed to be able to protect its user from harmful radiation. And yes, they're happy for the world to know that they are indeed dealing with benevolent uh, extraterrestrial intelligences. And yes, Sasha Stone did claim that the 5G BioShield, a completely normal USB stick that he presumably sourced by the thousand from AliExpress, he claimed that that device was in fact invented by benevolent extraterrestrial alien beings that appeared in the form of some kind of ethereal vapor in a Russian laboratory where this thing uh, allegedly was but actually wasn't designed. Do you see what I mean? Lack of plausibility has never been a barrier to Sasha Stone's preposterous grift. In fact, with Sasha Stone, the implausibility of what he is claiming is kind of the thing, because it sort of selects for only the stupidest possible investors in his madcap schemes. That was just a little amuse-bouche to, to whet your appetite before tonight's real feast. The, the meat and potatoes of tonight's banquet is a grift that is so utterly implausible, I think this could only have sprung from the fevered imagination of that failed rock star, Mr. Sasha Stone. Please, uh, just boggle your mind at this. Why is Sasha Stone attempting to buy a large plot of land in rural Tennessee. As we're making our determination over the next couple of weeks about the piece of land that we're going to close on and purchase as we begin this golden ticket project, which is to create the first full uh, flat micronation in the heartland of America. I suppose it's entirely fitting that the crown prince of conspiracy grifting should have his own territory. And Sasha Stone has determined through his own entirely mystical methods that the location of this community should be slap bang in the middle of unpopulated rural Tennessee. He's going to call this community New Earth. And he's got a scheme to, to raise money for the people who might be the pioneers of this newly settled land. It's called New Earth Golden Ticket. And he's prepared this rather elaborate promotional video to encourage people like you and me to sign up for this exciting living opportunity. We're at a pivotal moment. The old ways are crumbling and people everywhere are searching for a new path. Enter the New Earth Tennessee Micronation, an audacious leap towards freedom, innovation, and holistic living nestled right in America's heartland. Sasha Stone wants us to think that this is what living at New Earth Tennessee will be like. 
However, I think we can all see that this is in fact a crude hodgepodge of obvious stock photography and even more basic computer renders of, of a, an entirely hypothetical place. Remember, the land has not been bought, the architects have not been commissioned. There is literally nothing in this location because nobody even knows where it is yet, least of all Sasha Stone. But that's not going to get in the way of him making big promises to the people who sign up for this program. Because this isn't just a, a sort of Teletubby land for grown-ups, it's so much more. Golden ticket holders gain access to the Sovereignty Academy admission and course, U Priority, Regenesis Clinics, New Earth Pharmacy Products, Lazarus Initiative Gold Membership. So I think what Sasha is telling us that if you actually sign up for New Earth Tennessee Golden Ticket, the uh, founding members club that uh, will be the first pioneers of this micronation of which he will be the head of state, well, what you get up front is some kind of sovereign citizen indoctrination taught by one of his lackeys. And uh, whether that is a, a perk or a requirement of being a, a citizen of this micronation, I'm not entirely sure, because sovereignty, or at least Sasha Stone's rather strange concept of it, is going to be a, a very fundamental concept in this new community. You could pretend it's sovereignty, but if you have an umbilical cord connecting you to the kingdom of the devil, which is an electrical utility line, amenities on offer by the government, if those are contingent and dependent on that umbilical cord to the kingdom of the devil, then you are not sovereign and you are not free. You are indentured. Sasha Stone should rest easy, because I think the chance of the state of Tennessee forcing him to consume their essential utilities, such as gas, water, refuse collection, and electricity, well, is close to zero. In fact, because he is going to situate this community in the rural middle of nowhere, the chance of any of those utilities reaching his new heaven on earth are close to zero. Which is why Sasha Stone is very proud of the solution to at least one of these essential utility problems. Because Sasha is going to build this community around an entirely new kind of power supply. We are able to power up very significant electric output. I didn't add that cell shading effect. That was actually how Sasha presented this clip on his own promotional video, which is a very strange thing to do, but that is perhaps the least strange thing about what Sasha Stone is claiming. He's saying that what we have here is a sort of device that can power an entire community. In fact, all he needs to do is scale up this fabulous invention with the help of his thousand founding members. And he has the, the device's alleged inventor on hand to, to tell the world just how clever this, this absolutely wonderful gizmo is. Just tell us what you can. <laughs> it's just a generator. It's a normal generator, electric, and <laughs> it's made by the new earth. <laughs> and uh, it's working. So a free energy device. That's very fine. good. Okay, that's it. Don't say anything more because you get yourself into trouble. There's a concept called crank magnetism, the tendency of people who espouse cranky conspiracy theories to draw each other into like-minded communities. And if that concept be a real thing, then there's perhaps nobody with a, a greater amount of innate crank magnetism than Sasha Stone himself. He has surrounded himself with a bunch of kooky, grifters, zany charlatans, con men, people who have the, the loosest possible relationship with the truth. And amongst those grifters, there's perhaps none as ludicrous as the chap that Sasha Stone was presenting just then, Bruno Mihalisko. He's a Romanian-born charlatan and fake scientist, and he claims to have invented all kinds of free energy devices, such as the one that we just saw repainted in that uh, cartoonish video filter a few seconds ago. But um, Bruno has a tendency to get himself into trouble. Sasha is very wise to stop Bruno from speaking, because 
He loves to speak, and when he's allowed to describe what his device actually does, it turns out to be nothing at all like what Sasha Stone claimed it to be. So, guess what? We put up together a hydrogen generator. Okay, so we plug him here at 2020. So what we have, the, we can use this for vehicles, combustion engines, okay? Man, this is Romania here for you. Change the world, make free energy for everybody. Yes. Except of course, this isn't a free energy device. And we know that for 100% certainty, not because of our profound insights into the laws of thermodynamics, or even the long history of inventors who claim to have produced such a machine, who were then exposed as cranks and charlatans. We know this is false because we just saw Bruno plug it in. And if you bother to watch the rest of the video, you will see that this device is nothing other than an electrolysis machine. It takes water and it splits it into hydrogen and oxygen and that can be burnt. That's why he said that this could be used to fuel trucks. It's simply a machine that breaks down water. So this machine could not possibly be used as a power supply for Sasha Stone's utopian community. But that isn't going to stop Sasha Stone extolling its virtues because his proof that this is going to work is nothing other than pure, trust me, bro, when we've had these technologies for generations. That's the least of the issues. I've witnessed so many of them. Um, I am feeling fiercely confident that this is the right time. I'm sufficiently notified by good uh, people within the military intelligence basement, shall we say. Sasha Stone would like to invite us to suspend all disbelief because his military industrial basement has confirmed that Bruno Mihalescu's invention is in fact 100% real. And if a basement says something, then why should I disagree? Whatever he actually means by that, which is always a bit of a mystery with Sasha Stone because he's not the sort of person who would use one word where he could use 15. He's a very verbose man. Now, power isn't going to be the only problem that New Earth community is going to have to overcome in order to build the sort of prosperous utopia that Sasha envisages. Another big problem is food. Where are they going to get their food from? I suppose they could grow some of it themselves, but uh, there's a reason why that particular part of the world isn't very populated. The land can only support a certain number of people as it is, and this new community is unlikely to have the kinds of road and rail links that they'll need in order to bring large amounts of food into the community. I, and I certainly don't think there'll be a, a sufficiently long runway to airlift the, the essential supplies into this sprawling metropolis that Sasha imagines he will one day create. So they're going to have to take advantage of Bruno's free energy in order to overcome the problem of starvation. Two, it has been impossible to really make vertical greenhousing a success. Uh, vertical greenhousing is very, very heavy on energy, electrical consumption. Now that we have our own uh, energy technologies, we will be powering up uh, our vertical greenhouses on uh, close to zero point. Sasha Stone's plans are, as usual, pure sublime brilliance. The man is one of the world's true geniuses, isn't he? Because he's got it all worked out. First of all, all you have to do is overcome a, a cast iron law of physics, overcome all of the laws of thermodynamics in order to build a sort of free energy device, a perpetual motion machine that can get abundant energy from apparently everyday commonplace materials. And in doing so, generate all the energy that this community could possibly need. The, having invented possibly the, the greatest invention in all of human's history, Sasha Stone is going to use this to grow fruit. And that means that we can grow Madagascan apricots in Tennessee. We will never need to import any bullshit from around the world, no matter how exotic or luxurious it is. 
This explains why Sasha Stone's utopian micronation will not need to be connected to the rest of the state. It won't need power supplies. It won't need to be connected to gas supplies or water supplies. It won't be relying on the state to take away their garbage. They won't even need road or rail links to the rest of the, the country, presumably because all they need is some kind of pad to land their futuristic spaceships. The reason is, Sasha Stone is building a, a very sort of white geriatric version of Wakanda from the Marvel films. You know, uh, the place where Black Panther lives, the, the Afrocentric futuristic country built on such high technology that they're able to conceal themselves from the rest of the world. That is what Sasha Stone has in mind. But in order to achieve this lofty goal, he first has to sell this golden ticket. It's literally a thing he is selling to these founding members. And he needs 10,000 of them to get this futuristic cyber empire started. It's a residential micronation, obviously. We're looking for people to come and purpose their lives. Once you've made an acquisition of a golden ticket, there is a period of three years uh, that you have to locate into the nation. We need to read between the lines to see what Sasha Stone is actually offering his golden ticket members, because it's not a house in this community, nor is it even a plot of land. You have to buy that yourself if you want to move to New Earth, Tennessee. He is offering some perks, though. We, we already saw the Sovereign Citizen training course that is provided by one of his accomplices. But perhaps the, the most desirable perk that comes with being a golden ticket pioneer is access to the Regenesis health facility that Sasha Stone intends to build at the heart of this thriving new community. Um, what are the other benefits? We've got the Regenesis um clinic, spa, retreat centers, that's intended to be also a training ground for Regenesis um, clinicians that will go all around the world as we start to light up the Regenesis uh, spa, clinic, retreat centers. The Regenesis facility is going to be at the heart of New Earth, Tennessee. It's a sort of health and wellness spa that promotes Sasha Stone's mystical hippy-dippy philosophy. And it's plain to see who will be the target audience for this. It's gullible geriatrics with a sort of um, Eastern mystical vibe. They're the people who are into this kind of nonsense. And I'm sure this facility would be perfect if your chakras are in need of realignment, but uh, perhaps not so useful if you suffer from a serious medical disorder, such as a, a broken bone or congenital heart disease. And the evidence that I'm going to offer you to, that might give you concern for their medical abilities are these people, Sky and Anahita. I don't know which of them is which, but uh, they're going to describe their approach to healing. It's the body is really a, a series of, of filtration systems. These filtration systems are plugged and, 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 and have become very toxic in the environment. We know how to, how to cleanse these pathways, how to clean the river of light, how to, how to get rid of these, these parasitic organisms that are really the root cause of all disease. Sky and Anahita are the people that Sasha Stone has deputized to run the New Earth Regenesis Health Facility. They are the people who will be training other Regenesis healers. Uh, they are Sasha Stone's medical experts, despite not having any medical or scientific training at all. In fact, the way they're going to convince Sasha Stone's gullible audience that they are in fact experts, despite the obvious fact that they aren't, is by simply listing a, a series of scientific sounding terms in the vain hope that people think that those are subjects that Sky and Anahita know about. Bioresonant frequency technology, light mm -hmm. sound frequency, incredible diagnostics with precision medicine, genomics, um, you know, uh, all kinds of amazing things, stem cells. Yeah. The sad fact is that if you are somebody who decides to live in New Earth, Tennessee, if anything bad happens to you while you're out there, you will be dying in New Earth, Tennessee.
I think we could all agree that Sasha Stone has made a very compelling presentation that what we should all do right now is um, sell all our property, move out of the, the comfortable homes in towns and cities that we currently have, and relocate to his New Earth Tennessee micronation, this community that he hopes to build with our support. Because it, it has everything we could possibly want, uh, except for all the things we need, such as uh, basic utilities, such as road, rail, um, water, gas, and of course electricity, other than the electricity that he intends to supply via the magic of Bruno Mihalescu's free energy machines. I'm sure none of this can go wrong, which is why we all need to listen very carefully to Sasha Stone's sales pitch, because all of this could be yours. The, the chance to, well, maybe not own a plot of land, the chance to buy a plot of land near to where Sasha Stone is doing things. Okay, never mind. Look, just listen to how little this costs. The New Earth Tennessee Micronation, obviously we can't simply wave a magic wand. There will be 1,000 golden tickets at the price point of 10,000 USD per ticket. Sasha Stone never lets lack of plausibility get in the way of a profitable con. He would like us to pay him $10,000 for the privilege of buying another plot of land near to where he might build a thing based on the promise that it will be some kind of techno-utopia. And Sasha Stone, I, I very much doubt, will be living in New Earth, Tennessee, because it doesn't sound like a, a fun kind of um, cultured place. Even if a thousand people move to New Earth, Tennessee, that's really a, just a, a small village full of weird old people surrounding a, a health clinic that doesn't really do anything. That doesn't sound like a fun place to live. Not as fun as, say, for example, London. Why I mention that? Well, that is where Sasha Stone's apartment is. He has a, a very cool looking apartment in one of the fanciest parts of a, a very wealthy and cultural city. So given a choice between New Earth, Tennessee and London, where Sasha Stone lives and where also I live, I think I'd choose London. And I suspect so would Sasha Stone. In fact, how awful would be the place that you're currently living if moving to New Earth, Tennessee, a place that has absolutely nothing and never will have anything. If that seems attractive by comparison, then where you live must be an absolute hellhole tax-free residential status that will be contingent on the full realization of the allodial titling and the clearance of federal liens against the land. The founding belief, in fact, the core belief of the sovereign citizen movement is that its adherents should not have to pay for stuff, or at least not pay for stuff if you don't want to. It's a life free of obligation, free of duty, free of the, the kinds of normal concerns that go with being a member of a modern civilization. Sasha Stone is basically saying that if you leave your city life behind, if you give up everything and pay him that measly $10,000, he will enable them to live in this strange enclave in the middle of America that is somehow not America because he's going to work his magic and ensure that no federal law applies to the, the citizens of this particular tract of land. It's going to be something like maybe one of the Indian reservations where different laws apply, but uh, somehow uh, without the kinds of um, constitutional and legal basis that those existing territories have. Quite how Sasha Stone intends to work this magic is unspoken. But isn't that the way all conjurers operate? If they revealed their magic trick, then we wouldn't be so astounded. And boy, am I astounded at the um, incredible deal that Sasha Stone is offering. And I mean that word in its literal sense. Incredible, as in entirely unbelievable. I cannot credit it any belief, as nor should any sane person. It's obviously another one of Sasha Stone's implausible scams. Ready to join the revolution? 
Secure your place in the New Earth Tennessee Micronation today. Visit NewEarthGoldenTicket.com to purchase your golden ticket and become part of a movement that's reshaping the future. I've made up my mind I'm going to spend all of the money that I've earned from making Mind of Steel, and you can be assured that it's a fabulous fortune. I'm going to give it all to Sasha Stone so that I may have the privilege of relocating to his as yet unbuilt Aryan Wakanda. Until then, I will, I guess, have to sit in a muddy field and make myself whatever kind of shelter I can cobble together, and that is where I'm going to make my video show from. It has concerned me, though, that Sasha Stone might not actually build this thing. He might just take the, the small number of donations he receives, and instead of going to rural Tennessee, he might just retire back to his uh, trendy apartment in London. Uh, that would be a bit of a tragedy, wouldn't it? Because um, probably what he'd do then would be um, use that money to live comfortably whilst all the people he's ripped off are, are living in some kind of swampish hellhole. And, and he's probably going to use that comfortable existence to dream up another scam, like his um, 5G apocalypse movie, or the, the 5G Bioshield USB sticks from AliExpress that he sold for hundreds of pounds at a time. Wouldn't that be surprising if that's what Sasha Stone actually intended to do? Well, um, I shall leave you on that um, issue to ponder for your own self. Is Sasha Stone going to, to live in the middle of nowhere, or is he going to continue uh, enjoying his jet-setting life? I, I couldn't possibly tell you. Until next week, when I have another preposterous episode of Mind of Steel.